Hello, movers and shakers. Let me ask you something. Are you considering using a contracted labor or versus uh, hiring somebody? Now, I don't know if you guys seen the last video, but if you did, I will put it right up there for you. But if you are linking about using contracted labor, here are some things I think you should know before you get into this, okay? Hi guys, I'm Jay Burnham and this is the Six Figure Moving Academy. Thank you guys for coming. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please go down right below there, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and that will inform you when I upload a new video. So let's get right into this, okay? So I've just started using contracted labor. And I'm when I say contracted labor, let me define it. Contracted labor is not just a 1099 person that you put on. That is just a 1099, but in real, in real essence, a employee. And it's also not somebody that you're going to hire off a hire helper or movinghelp.com. These guys, the contracted labor that I'm referring to are the guys that have years, sometimes even decades of experience in the moving uh, field. They know how to do everything. They know how to do inventory. They know how to pack. They know how to wrap. They know how to do everything you could think of in the moving uh, business. And they are usually work for major van lines. They're as lumpers for major la van lines for when a van line comes in, these van line uh, drivers will call up these uh, contractors and have them load their semis or and or unload their semis and do their packing and everything for them so they know how to work with all the major van line companies as well as local moving companies like ours, right? These guys are usually background checked, they're drug screened, everything. And like I said, some of them are former drivers, some of them um, are just, you know, just lumpers, but they are highly experienced and they're highly adaptable. But there are things that you should know before you go into actually hiring these contract laborers, okay? I just And just for all get up, I'm just starting to use contract laborers. I've been using them now for about a couple of months. I'm very happy with using them because the quality of their service all, all in all, in for the most part, is very, very high. Their attention to detail, their professionalism is higher, and they know how to do it. But there are some uh, foibles, there are some things that you need to know that you sh should be aware of to make your working with these contractors uh, enjoyable for them and enjoyable for you. And if there's a middleman, enjoyable for the middleman so no one gets uh, hurt or, or offended or upset or pissed off or whatever, right? Because your contracted labor, your laborers are your greatest asset in your moving business. You might think it's your truck. You might think it's your equipment. You might think it's your marketing strategy or your ability to sell. But that all comes down to nothing if your movers can't do the job that you are selling or promoting or advertising or marketing. Right, so your guys are number one. I don't care how many great trucks you have. I don't care about the looks of your truck. If your movers are shit, you're gonna have a shit service and that's gonna, that reputation is going to expand. So getting good labor is important. So making sure that your contractors are happy will make you happy. And if there's a middleman that brokers some of these guys, it'll make them happy. So all in all, let's just make everybody happy. And these are some of the things that I have learned. And I'm still learning. And this list might expand. It might condense. Um, you got, if you guys got any, you know, the guys who are using these contracted labors, if you know of anything that should be added to this or people should know, I would love to see those down in the comments below. I am by no far, I am by no means an expert in this. These are just some of the things that I have come to learn when using contract labor, right? There's only five things, but again, if you know something that should be added to it or something that should be known, please put it down in the comment section below so that everybody gets a chance to do this, right? All right, so here's, Here's something that I didn't know. I probably should have. I should have done a little bit more research. I know it was, I was st stupid, but these guys, they're looking for a minimum. 
So if you've got a, just a labor job, and the labor job's only going to be two or three hours, these guys usually have like a four-hour minimum that they want to work. They're, they're not, they don't want... They don't want to come out for anything unless you're going to pay them a four-hour minimum. Usually, it, sometimes it's it's a it's a minimum amount of the, what they're going to pay. Like uh, I, I'm finding out that it's like 120 to 150 dollars a minimum that they're going to come out to do it. Some of some of these guys demand 200 dollars a day, which is ridiculous. And if and if they're on the boards, if they're on the boards saying, hey, I demand $200 a day, they're usually kicked off because nobody, that's just, that's just bullshit. Um, so if you got any contract laborers that are demanding $200 a day, just get rid of them, right? They might be great, but if they're demanding $200, don't get me wrong. Sometimes whatever they're doing might deserve $200 a day. But if they're demanding it, even for a, as a minimum, and you only got something, if they're only going to unload and it takes like uh, three, four hours to unload like a 26-foot truck or whatever, come on, that's ridiculous, right? No one, there is no, I mean, there are attorneys and doctors that don't get paid that much money, right? So, I mean, and moving is not rocket science, all right? It isn't. So there, you know, there is, but there is a minimum and you should be paying attention to the minimum. So when you hire the contracted laborers, if you're going through a broker, ask, is there a minimum that I, you know, is there a minimum amount that these guys want paid? You know, is it $100? Is it $120? Is it $150? Find out what that minimum is. And when you book your job, make sure that you can pay whatever that minimum is, right? So, and don't, and if you can't pay the minimum for a job, so the job's not going to pay you enough to pay the guys and make a profit, then you either need to get somebody different to do the job or you need to charge more for, for those jobs, okay? So just understand, there is a minimum amount that these guys are going to accept in form of pay. Good. Um, second thing that I have found out is on like Saturdays and, and Sundays, they, got, they want a little bit extra. Why? I don't know, but that's what I'm finding out. Um, that, well, it's a Saturday, so we want a little bit more. So if their minimum was 120, they're probably gonna want $150 if it's for Saturday. Um, I, I just, uh, you know, I, I just don't, don't know. And again, you know, if, if the job requires it, like there's a lot of heavy ass shit and, they're, and, they go, and they're going, above and beyond what you're asking them to do, then yes, give them $200 a day. But, uh, you know, $150 uh, per person per day is a pretty good standard. Um, so just make sure, um, you know, $120 to $150 is pretty good from what I'm finding out. Again, if, the, if, if, if they're like, there's they got two trucks that have to unload and it's all heavy shit and it's got to go up like three flights of stairs, then yeah, you might want to give them 200 bucks. So, you know, don't be stupid, you know, just because they're, you know, they're demanding $200 a day doesn't necessarily that that's unquestionable for what you're, you're asking them to do. All right. So just realize what you're asking them to do and, and, and do it. And then realize that on like weekend days that they're probably going to bump it up. Okay. You know, these guys are out there humping and hustling and I think charging for, you know, weekends is a, a little bit, you know, for me, I can't concept it, but there are moving companies that charge higher for a weekend, which I think is ridiculous, but it's because it's high volume or whatever. And I get it, but sometimes these guys don't get the concept of, you know, hey, the moving company's got to make money too. You know what I mean? Anyway, just make sure before you hire them, hey, I'm asking you work a Sunday. What's your minimum? and make sure you get that, okay? Another thing that I'm finding out is that these guys, they would prefer to work six to eight hours for $150 versus paying, you know, uh, getting $150 for two or three, four hours job. You know, they got some small job that's two, three, four hours, and they're gonna get paid 150 of it. They would rather work six to eight hours for that same 150. Doesn't make sense to me. I would rather work the three, four out, the two, three, four hours for 150, make far more money per hour than having to work six, eight hours for that that 150. But these guys want to stay busy. 
I get that. That you know, I, I personally don't have that same idea. But these guys, for the and it's not everyone. Some of them are like me. Some of them would rather you know work two or three or four hours in a day and get 150 for the job or 120 for the job, and versus working six to eight hours. You know that you know, you know that it is what it is. Um, again, uh, you're gonna have to. Uh, you're going to have to find this out when you talk to your contracted laborers. All right. And here, you know, I've been kind of alluding to it without quite saying the next thing I've learned is before you do the job, tell them exactly what the job is. Do not, do not kind of slough it off. Don't kind of soft pedal it. Tell them exactly, hey, look, this is going to go up, up to a four floor, story floor. You know, it's two stories or whatever it is. And, um, you know, it, it's, it is what, you, you know, and you're going to, there is a freight elevator, but you know, it's not very big. You know, there's, it's all going to be heavy stuff. I'm going to, you're going to be required to take things apart, um, blah, blah, blah. You know, so just make sure that they, they know what they're going to get into and you actually negotiate the price before you get them booked. Before you book them, go, okay, how much do you want? Here's what the move is. Here's everything that I know about the move. What is it that you want? And actually get it in writing. Um, a text message, an email or something saying, it doesn't have to be a thing. Just say, hey, look, here it is. Here's what I want. I want. Here's what I want per person. It's 120, it's 150, it's 200, whatever it is, let them know and actually get it in writing by a text or whatever, right? And because the last thing that I've learned is they will constantly bitch. For instance, I just did a move. I agreed I was going to pay these guys $150 an hour. I told them exactly what the move was. I told them it was going to be from one place. There's going to be a second pickup, and then we got to go. And then you're going to have to unload. There's going to be some, you know, some minor uh, disassembly and assembly, um, so on and so forth. We agreed to a price of $150, and they, and they still bitched. They wanted more money, even after I agreed to a price of one fifty per person, and I told them it was going to be the six to eight hours. It actually ended up not quite seven hours, but almost seven hours, and they still wanted more money. And it wasn't that difficult. They didn't have to take apart hardly anything. It was just basically load up the truck, unload the truck. I actually did most of the actually packing in the truck. All they did was bring me the stuff onto the truck, except for the second stop where. I got a little confused and, and they worked it out. So, but I did most of the packing of the truck, so they didn't have to do that. So, uh, just, just make sure that you know exactly, and you guys agree to exactly what their, their responsibilities are going to be and what their responsibilities are not going to be and, and what the move actually entails. And don't, don't candy coat the move to, to get a lesser price. That's, that's BS. And that's, that's just shitty on your part, all right? Tell them exactly, right? And pay them what they're worth because they're worth it, okay, guys? These guys are worth it. So pay them what they're worth. And if, but, it, but also don't let them bully you into making you feel like you need to pay them more. If you agree to 120 a person for a six-hour day, that's what you pay them, right? If you feel that they deserve a tip, tip them. If the customer doesn't tip them, then you should tip them if they deserve the tip, right? Absolutely, by all means, um, treat, them, treat them right. But also don't let them bully you. Don't let them start bitching and moaning. And, and, and you know, if they go a little over, do a little bit more than what you expect, then pay them a little bit more. That's totally fine. I don't have a problem with that. Consider that a tip. That's just the cost of doing business, folks. But also don't feel like you, you, you have to, you're, don't feel like you're gonna be forced to do that, okay? Don't, just because they're going, well, this is actually a two, uh, this should be a $200 a day job, you know, when you already agreed to 150. Because they're going to do that. They're going to try to pull that shit over on you. Don't let them. But that again, if it, if, if it really wasn't, you know, if they went over and above, then yeah, give them $200 per person if you can afford it, if the job uh, is involved, right? But if you... The thing is, is if you can't afford it, then you either needed to charge more for the move in the first place, 
or you shouldn't be using these kind of guys. You should be just be using Craigslist labor, right? So, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a fine balance and I'm learning what that fine balance is. I haven't really got that uh, nailed in myself, but these are just some of the things that I've learned. I, some of the things that I think you should know before you hire contracted labor. The biggest thing is get it in writing. Don't candy coat, don't sugar coat the job. Tell them exactly what it is, what it's gonna entail, what it's gonna be involved, you know, uh, and, and just, and then negotiate a, a price. And then once you come to an, a price, like whether, whether it's 100, 120, 150, whatever it is, get it in writing in an email where they either, they write it to you and you agree, or you write it to them and then they agree. A text message or Facebook messenger, that's fine too. Just make sure that it's in writing. So when they go, oh, I want $200, just say, hey, look, you said, you know, you were, you were going to take 130 per, 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 per person for this. And I, I laid it all out for you. Um, so, you know, because, you know, they're hustling too. And they're going to try to get the maximum amount of dollars for their job just like you are. So understand that they're in business to make money just as much as you're in business to make money, but there's got to be an workable agreement and just make sure that there's something in writing. You agree to it before you do the job and, and just do the job and then make sure that it, you know, and whatever you could do, any little extras that you could help them with water, tools, equipment, um, anything that makes their life easier, do it. Okay. Uh, I'm still learning and I'm still tweaking, but I just thought this is a great video that you guys should know before you hire your contract. Here are some five things you should, you should know before you hire contracted labor. Okay. So thank you guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure that you uh, share this with all your family and friends. Leave me a comment below whether about what you feel about this video. Like here, you know, Jay, you should have probably added this or you know, they should also know about blah or, you know, I just think you're, you're a fat, ugly, stupid dude. And, and then, you know, you can bite me, which I will probably end up removing your comment because it's just rude, you know, but, um, anyway, guys, just, just give me some love on the comment section. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.